Hey guys, Angus here, bringing another Airsoft review today. Today we're going to be taking a look at a gun that I purchased for myself from my personal collection. This is the Cybergun License 1928 Thompson, also known as the Chicago Typewriter. Interested in purchasing this gun, if you watch the review, there's a link down below to our sponsor, AirsoftStation.com. You can purchase this gun for about $160. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the review here. Do want to plug a couple things first for myself. First one, New Jersey Airsofters, we're thinking of having a game. Uh, this Sunday, the 19th, of Picasso Lake Paintball, Winslow, New Jersey. If you're interested in that, please send me a message about that. Another thing I do want to plug, down below there's a link to my new Facebook page, Death Quarters of YouTube. Please like that. Let's try and get it to, you know, 150 fans tonight or in the next couple of days. We're getting rid of the old one, the team one, and now we're just making the YouTube one. So please go ahead and like that. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into the review of the Cybergun 1928 Thompson. For starters, let's open up this box and see what is included when you purchase the Tommy gun from Airsoft Station for about $160. Alright, so the box your gun comes in is typical of Cybergun, very, very flashy. You get a nice big picture of the gun, got a picture of some guys shooting in the Tommy gun, and you also do have an FPS reading on here that is chrono with .12, saying this gun shoots around 4 to 65 FPS. Again, it's .12, so this gun shoots at about 350 feet per second with .2. So let's take this box top off, see what your packaging looks like. When you take the box top off, this is what you should see. Everything is packaged very, very tightly in tight styrofoam, and for added protection during shipping, the box will come coated with a tight layer of transparent plastic to keep everything secured inside the box. Inside the box, you have a fairly short cleaning into jamming rod, your Cybergun Thompson 1928 manual. This is a pretty simplistic manual. It tells you to do your simple stuff, put your battery in, load up your mag, have some warranty information on the back. You'll also get a pretty cool Cybergun catalog detailing all the different stuff. Then in Palco Sports sells uh, a bunch of Swiss Arms, Ares, King Arms stuff, masks, targets, accessories for your guns, etc. Pretty cool thing they included. You'll get a 250 mah output small type trickle charger. This is uh, not the best. Probably want to get a smart charger, but a 8.4 volt, 1100 milliamp small type battery. This is your typical battery you get with your clone AGs. I would recommend you get a new battery over this one, considering this was only an 8.4, and you'd probably want to get a 9.6 for this gun. You'll have your 450 round metal drum magazine for the Thompson. And of course, your Chicago typewriter Airsoft AG itself. Now, first impressions, going back with that unboxing video I did recently, uh, you'll see my reaction kind of there. The first thing when you pull this out of the box that hits you first up, you pull it out of the box saying, oh, this is looking nice, it's going to be a great gun, pick it up. The cheapness of the wood really hits you, and it just downs you really quick. The false wood on here, the plastic stock pistol grip and foregrip, these are the cheapest part of the gun. They don't feel nice at all, in my opinion. Good thing is you can get a real wood stock and a real wood pistol grip for the gun if you wanted to. Unfortunately, the foregrip here, which is very wobbly actually. Uh, you have to get that custom made or maybe you can find one. I had no luck finding one. If you find one, let me know. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Anyway, besides those, the gun honestly feels very, very nice. you got a metal receiver here, metal rear sight, metal outer barrel, metal front sight, metal 450 round drum magazine, metal butt of the stock, and metal sling mounts on it as well as, well as metal selector switch, safety switch, and bolt. So, Construction-wise, besides the wood, it feels really nice. It does have a hefty weight in your hands, and the stock being a little awkward and uncomfortable for your shoulder, it feels pretty heavy in your hands. The only letdown to the external construction is the, is the plastic wood pieces on this gun. Internally, you get a metal gearbox in here. One question somebody kept asking me, I can buy the $80 version of this. Does it have a metal gearbox? No. The $80 version of this gun is a plastic gearbox. The $160 version has the metal gearbox. So let's go ahead and get into some of the features of the Chicago Typewriter. All right, now as with all my reviews, of course, we're going to start out by talking about the battery compartment, how to put your battery into the gun. Now, if you've ever handled the just the normal Thompson version, the M1A1, it's basically the exact same process to put your battery in. You have your metal butt plate back here. In order to open that up, you want to stick your finger in this small little slit there. This piece will flip out like so. At that point, you want to reach your finger in, pull out, and the whole metal butt plate will spin downward. You want to spin it downward, and that reveals your battery compartment and your small type connector. Now, when you get the gun, it'll come with a big foam insert in here. It's basically taking up your entire compartment. And uh, the reason they have that in there is so you won't the battery won't rattle because this battery space is quite large. And when you put a small little battery in there, like this 8.4 without the insert, it's gonna rattle all around. You hear a light thunk going up and down as you move. But in my opinion, just take that foam insert out right away. 
take it out with a corkscrew or a pair of pliers. It's really wedged in there. We'll take a couple tries to get it out. Uh, but again, your battery will rattle around there. You have quite a lot of battery space in here. That's why I say get a new battery, get a nice 9.6 butterfly or nunchuck. Those will fit in there rather well. This gun is covered in an abundance of trades. On the left side of the gun, you have the bright words Thompson Submachine Gun, caliber 6mm, as well as U.S. model 1928 with a serial number. And on the right side of the weapon, you have all the U.S. patents for the Thompson. And on the magazine, you have a nice magazine trade. Magazine type L Thompson submachine gun, 450 shots for the 1928 model, as well as a Thompson trademark. The only type of battery this thing probably couldn't fit would be a uh, larger brick type or a stick type battery. So battery space, you're pretty much set. Very simple process as to getting your battery inside. Once it's in, tuck your wires back inside the stock. Push outward, spin the butt plate back upward, lock it into place like so. In order for it to lock, you have to have that piece flipping out, and it will lock and shut. At that point, your battery's in, you're ready to go. All right, now some of your main features for operation of the weapon are located on the left side of the gun. There are those two small switches right there. These control your safety and your mode of fire, whether it's semi or full automatic. You have your switch all the way in the back here. When it's facing towards the shooter, the gun is unsafe. The trigger cannot be pulled. However, if you were to flip it forward, hear that click, so it's facing towards the front of the gun. The trigger can be pulled and the gun's on fire. The switch in front of that, that is to control semi and full auto modes of fire. When it is facing towards the shooter, the weapon is on single shot. And if you were to flip it forward, hear another click, the weapon is on full auto. This gun doesn't have too great of a rate of fire on full auto, so you might have to throw some upgrades in there. These switches are pretty smooth. They don't move around unless you actually put some force on them. And as you can heard, that nice click lets you know when they're in position. Also, it has the nice words engraved into the side of the gun, so it lets you know which is which. Fire, safe, full auto, semi. Those are engraved into the side of the gun. They're not just painted on. It'll rub off eventually. They're engraved into the metal. Now, whenever you see the Tommy gun in the movies, you see not the normal Thompson stick mag on it, but the big old drum mag, and that's why they go ahead and include the drum magazine with the Chicago typewriter package. A drum mag you get constructed of metal. It's a solid drum magazine. You could probably drop it in. It won't have too much effect on it because it does have a rather solid construction. In order to wind it, you have to turn this large dial in the front counterclockwise. If you were to turn it clockwise or try to turn it clockwise, you will break the magazine, so please counterclockwise only. The, the BBs will wind, feed upward through the top into the gun. I already see this kind of feed port here is starting to crack a little bit, so maybe that piece on the magazine isn't all too well constructed. Constructed That piece is constructed in plastic. Cool thing about the drum mag is when it's on the gun, it actually has a small port here to fill up with BBs. Simply slide that open and keep the drum mag on the gun. Take one of your speed loader tipped bottles and dump BBs right in as you're still pulling the trigger. So you can refill this mag in game without even having to take the magazine off. That's a really cool feature there. It's one of the main reasons that I like this drum mag so much. Uh, however, if you didn't want the drum mag, because it does add quite a bit of weight to the gun, it really makes it hefty in the middle and also typical like the real drum magazines. It rattles around. You can go with normal Thompson stick mags. The gun is compatible with those, the 300 round high caps or the mid-capacity magazines they make for it if you wanted to get rid of the rattle and the weight of the drum magazine. But otherwise, it's cool they include the drum magazine. I think it's an awesome feature, and I really like the drum magazine a lot. I have yet to have any feeding issues with this thing. Here's a look at your gun's iron sights, but then again, if you're shooting in this in the Prohibition era style where you fire it from the hip, you won't need the iron sights, which that's how the mobsters used to shoot in the old days, and now we go to shooting a gun sideways. Where did we go wrong? Anyway, your iron sights in this gun, I don't like the rear sight too much. It is constructed metal. It has this small sort of piece in the middle that you can heighten like so. You can shrink it, simply push it down, or you can raise it up. It has a small hole in the middle to line up with the gun's front sight, which is just your standard little front sight post. Line up the hole in your rear sight with the front sight post to aim and fire. Uh, Iron sights are decent, but again, I really don't care for the rear sight too much because it's a little flimsy, moves around really easy side to side, and it really just, you can easily just move it up and down. So I imagine it will stay in that selected position of yours. So iron sights are decent, but then again, you're using the Tommy gun, what do you need iron sights for? All right, last thing we're going to be taking a look at here is your gun's hop-up. Hop-up is not located behind the bolt. When you pull the bolt back, you'll find it does no function at all. It doesn't reveal your, reveal your hop-up because your hop-up is located up here. And the reason for that, I believe, is because the actual 1928 Chicago version of the Thompson, the bolt was actually up top and it would come back and the shells would be released here. But uh, for the military, they moved it down to the side so that it would be easier to aim with your iron sights. At least I'm, I think that's what it is, what I've been told. 
Uh, so hopefully that's the reason I got it right. Otherwise, feel free to go ahead and correct me once. You don't need to tell me 16 times, but your hop-up is up here. I found this hop-up to be actually decently effective. You might want to just slightly turn it. I had it perfectly, but then I had to unadjust it for the chrono, and then I went to readjust it for the shooting test. It didn't work out too well, but this is a nice hop-up unit. I found it to be very, very effective. So let's go ahead and get to the final conclusion of this review. All right, so the final conclusion of this review. The Cybergun License CYMA Thompson 1928 is a very nice gun. I like it a lot. Then again, there's some people who would take one look at it and say, I don't want that. It's ugly. But again, me, I like it a lot. I like unique guns. And this is, even though it's been out for a while, not many people own it. It's a pretty unique weapon. And I'm very happy to have it. There are a couple things I don't like about the gun too much. The rear sight's really kind of flimsy and it jiggles around a lot. It doesn't really stay in place. The false wood pieces on this gun are crap. I don't like them at all. They're really uncomfortable. They feel really cheap. And, you know, they might make the gun weigh a little bit less, but otherwise they just feel really cheap in your hands. And if you can, I'd recommend you replace these with real wood pieces to get over the uh, the cheapness of the plastic on them. The gun is a little bit hefty, a little bit of uh, undistributed weight here, considering the drum mag really does have some weight in the middle with the metal receiver, outer barrel, all that. The front of the gun really doesn't have any weight on it. The, Stock, considering it's basically hollow, doesn't have too much weight in the back, so a lot of the weight is kind of concentrated in the middle. But pros of the gun, it comes with a 450 round drum magazine that honestly works rather well and it's constructed of metal. You have a lot of battery space in this uh, gun. You can house probably quite a large battery in there, probably squeeze in butterfly nunchuck batteries, 2300 milliamp, get a long day of play out of it and a decent rate of fire out of the gun. Has nice trades all over the weapon, including on the magazine. Has the engravings near the fire selector switch and the safety switch. And it's just a badass looking gun. I really like it a lot. Uh, probably on a 1 to 10 scale. I'd probably say this is maybe a 6 or a 7, possibly an 8. The only things are really weighing it down again are the cheap wood. The rate of fire is not too great on it. And, you know, the drum mags rattle with under distribution of weight. The hop-up on this gun I found to be very nice, and construction I found to be very nice. The only thing uh, going against the construction, again, the wood pieces that are the main con of this gun. They're the main thing that drags it down, but you cannot replace these with a real wood kit if you wanted to spend the money. So with that being said, guys, that's been Death Core Airsoft's review of the Cybergun Licensed OEM by CYMA, Chicago Typewriter, Tommy Gun, Thompson 1928 model, whatever you want to call it, guys. Thanks for watching. Link down in the description to airsoftstation.com. You can purchase this gun for about $160. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.